Chapter 5. Design Translation. Now we go from concept to creation across all the different contexts of use. So first we're going to review the design. We're going to translate that design from a fixed idea into a system of hierarchy. We're going to look at patterns and flow. And we're going to look from how this might move from static to dynamic, thinking about how well will this site work if the content changes tomorrow. So we have some wireframes, and those will be available for you to download so you can take a look at them yourself. They're covering all the different pages on the website, from a home page to the portfolio page to an about page. And we have a design comp. So we have what we want it to end up looking like. And that's still something that's pretty static, but it gives us a lot of good pointers about style cues as well as how we'd end up wanting to break things up and lay them out on the page. And then we need to get into flow. If it's going to move and scale across different screen sizes, we want to make sure that we have a good understanding of how we want that layout to move and change just as you see it scale right here. And speaking of patterns, I want to talk a little bit about design patterns and pattern libraries and this notion of breaking your design into different component parts and deciding how you want those component parts to behave and fit together. So on the screen here is a listing of different pattern libraries that were collected by Brad Frost and Anna Debenham on styleguides.io. And these are all based around a lot of similar ideas that Brad himself has written about in his system of atomic design, where he's thought about design patterns from an atomic level, where you're connecting individual elements together to form a molecule, like a form element that might have a label and a wrapping around it, pulled all together into an organism, which might be the whole form, all thrown into a template that might show you how you would apply all of those styles together for any kind of form to that specific content page that we'll have on your own site. This is another example, a more detailed one from the U.S. Digital Service, which it shows some of the UI components that they've put together for the U.S. Web Design Standards. So you can see a whole bunch of different examples of how buttons might behave, secondary buttons, how they would be styled, how you might style a table or different form elements. It's really an incredible library. We'll include links to some of these specifics in the notes. Finally, content growth. Now you may be making a static website or you might decide to put it into a content management system of some kind or even maybe make your own, but you want to have these design patterns like we see here on the right and decide how those things come together and how they might move and change and what are the changeable pieces as you go out building out your website. Now another thing I wanted to point out with this example is that you'll see one of these titles go, wraps onto a second line. One of the things that you have to anticipate on the web, especially with the way layouts move and scale, is that you're never going to create the perfect content that will always have exactly the same number of words on every line. So the reason we use techniques like Flexbox is to help make our design systems more resilient. This is especially important when you start to think about moving your content into a content management system. And we'll take a look at how that might work. And what I have here is a bit of a cheat, I've used another content management system to flow in some of the content to show you what it might look like were you to put this into a content management system and show how you would break it into a form that might allow you to upload that image and title and text separately, hit save and not have to worry about any of that markup. Now I happen to work with Drupal more than other content management systems, but there's also WordPress and many others out there that would be perfectly good alternatives to build a portfolio site. The whole idea with that content management system is that you have a database behind it so that like items, such as portfolio items that have images, text, a title, perhaps an external link, those things are all pretty similar. So having a system where you can add more of them and have it publish it automatically for you certainly saves an awful lot of time and headache. So there you have it. We've broken down the page. We've taken a look at some of the patterns throughout your design, and we've reviewed some of those patterns and layouts for trouble spots with changing content to make sure that we know where we might get tripped up with that extra long title. Now let's turn our attention to assignments. In this course, the majority of your learning will take place as you follow along with my code and we build a responsive portfolio page for a fictional web designer together. In addition to that project, I'll be giving you and other assignments designed to help you further your knowledge of the topics we've covered. 
So every lesson has at least two assignments, and we've already discussed the first assignment, which is the quiz. Here's the second assignment for this lesson. It will require a web browser, which you should have, and a smartphone, which you most likely have. I'd like you to go online and find at least one portfolio site for a web designer. You can do this by going to Google and using basic search terms such as CSS portfolio sites or web designer portfolio sites. Once you've found one you like, click around a few pages and note things such as layout, animations, how fast the page loads, and anything else that comes to mind. Next, using your smartphone, go to the same website. How did the experience change? Is there a difference in the layout or how fast the pages load? Note down a few thoughts and when you're done, head over to the forum for this class and post your comments in a new thread like Lesson 1 Assignment. Go into the thread for another student's assignment, read what they had to say, and make a comment as well. That's it for now. This will just get you started. In the next lesson, you'll begin learning the core concepts of designing modern responsive CSS layouts and start some serious responsive coding as well.